to me, payroll is really the most fundamental form of economic exchange. You know, when I think about the image that comes into mind, it's that first job you have. You know, you think about you're in high school or whatnot, and you're trying to make a little bit of extra money to, you know, be able to go out for pizza or whatever it might be. And it's so hard. You, you don't know how to apply. You don't know how to go get the job. And that first day when you actually get that paycheck, someone, you know, hands you money for work that you've done is, I think, so powerful. I, you know, I, I remember that experience quite vividly. That's what payroll means. I think often, you know, those of us that are practitioners in the industry get caught up in all the new taxes and complicated parts of it and whatnot. And, and sometimes you lose actually that beauty, almost that, you know, romantic notion, if you will, of just that that basic form of value exchange that is, is the core of, you know, why we all exist as a business. Here's a pre-show scenario for you. Imagine you had to visit six houses just to cook your dinner. One place has the pots and pans, one has the stove, another has the food. You get the idea. Sounds ridiculous, right? Well, the reality is most global businesses operate the same way, using six different tools just to pay their global workforce. But now there's one platform offering truly simple, truly global payroll. And that's today's sponsor. That's Deal. That's D-E-E-L. With in-house customer success managers, local payroll experts, dedicated points of contact, and more, Deal eliminates third-party handovers and provides unmatched compliance and flexibility. In fact, they'll even help you track and flag the latest changes in payroll regulations before they even become an issue. So are you ready to transform your global payroll system? If you are, click at the link in the show notes below to book a demo with Deal today. That's D-E-E-L. Hello and welcome back to the Payroll Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Nick Day. I'm CEO at JGA Recruitment Group. We're specialist payroll recruiters with offices in the UK, Europe, and now the US as well. And today I've got a fantastic guest, an entrepreneur who's joining us on today's show from the US. And we're going to be exploring the fascinating, the exciting world that is payroll, but in particular, the future of payroll. More specifically, how payroll is potentially fundamentally broken and why therefore embedded payroll could be the game changer we've all been waiting for. What is embedded payroll? I'm sure you're all thinking right now. We're going to dive into that detail during the course of today's show because joining me today is Andrew Brown. He's CEO and founder of Check, a leading payroll infrastructure platform backed by Stripe, Index and Bedrock. Valued at $725 million, Andrew's company powers the payroll systems behind platforms like House Call Pro, Wave, and Seven Shifts, and has become a key player in building the future of payroll. In fact, I've had one of Andrew's uh, compatriots on the show before, back in 2022, where we talked about data and infrastructures when Jim Cole joined me. So I'm delighted to welcome Andrew back on the show today because we're going to be diving deep into some of the challenges that I know you are faced with if you're listening to this show right now, because payroll is challenging. And that's why we're going to discover why embedded payroll could be the future and exactly what Check is doing to drive the change in the industry. So without further ado, welcome Andrew Brown to the Payroll Podcast. How are you feeling? Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me on today. I'm excited to be here. Super excited to have you. Super excited to have a fellow entrepreneur on the show as well. Let me start with this first question, something I ask all of my guests, which is this. What does the word payroll mean to you? To me, payroll is really the most fundamental form of economic exchange. You know, when I think about the image that comes into mind, it's that first job you have. You know, you think about you're in high school or whatnot, and you're trying to make a little bit of extra money to, you know, be able to go out for pizza or whatever it might be. And it's so hard. You, you don't know how to apply. You don't know how to go get the job. And that first day when you actually get that paycheck, someone, you know, hands you money for work that you've done is, I think, so powerful. I, you know, I, I remember that experience quite vividly. Uh, and to me, like, that's that's what payroll means. I think often, you know, those of us sort of practitioners in the industry get caught up in all the new taxes and complicated parts of it and whatnot. And, and sometimes you lose actually that that beauty almost that you know romantic notion if you will of just that that basic form of value exchange that is is the core of you know why we all exist as a as a business fantastic what a beautiful place to start now for just for transparency for the audience here i had a really fascinating conversation with one of andrew's colleagues a guy called peter who told me he gave me this hypothesis that nick payroll is broken for business and i said well what, tell me more and he said i need to get andrew on the show so here we are talking with andrew i want to find out more payroll is broken for business what does that mean tell us yeah absolutely so uh 
I know you have listeners all over the world and who work in all different types of payroll. So I'll, I'll sort of narrow us in to start with on really small and medium sized businesses here in the US. So talk about, you know, sort of a thousand employees and less by and large. For those businesses, today their experience is really broken for the following reason. They increasingly, over the last 10 years, have adopted some sort of modern software platform as the operating system for their business. So if they're a coffee shop, that might be Drippos, one of our, our customers. Or if they are a plumber, it might be House Call Pro, another one of our company customers. If it's a, a construction company, it might be Mitre, another of Check's partners. Um, so that's great. You know, I'll have this platform that is software that's built just really custom for you. And, and you wouldn't think of it necessarily as being the uh, the payroll platform for you, um, but it's what you're going to go use to run your business. Now, the problem is you've got some other system that's actually doing payroll and HR and team management for you. Those two systems now are out of sync. They're not compatible with one another, and you're managing your data and your information in two different places. To make matters worse, kind of your your primary platform or all of your data is is the new one, the modern one. And so you're stuck trying to take this platform you love, get all the data out of it, put it into some older payroll system, move it all back. It's just all kind of a mess. And the net result is too much time and energy spent on the minutia of payroll rather than on uh, you know, kind of the important parts, the fun parts of actually building and running your business, which um, you know, certainly the small business owners across the country have uh, more than enough to do uh, on on that side of things without having to worry about payroll. So that's that's really the problem that we've seen and that the partners that we have and that we power um, are, are really aiming to solve. It's how do we, you know, you asked earlier, what does payroll mean to me? It's how do we get back to that most basic form of value exchange, you know, paying money for work, being really simple and straightforward. Well, let's let's hone in on that then just for just for a moment because I want to understand what because what are the key struggles that some of the smaller businesses, you know, zero to one thousand employees you mentioned there, that they common commonly face within the industry? Because there must be a number of different pain points that we need to solve here. One of those you've mentioned there is that they're not necessarily talking to each other. There's a lot of data input. We know that if you're losing time dealing with the data and the mundane type tasks, then we're not thinking with that horizon thinking we need. We can't focus on that as our business. But what are the common pain points? What are the common struggles that you're seeing? And and how we how does this solution, I guess, or what are some of the processes we can do to start overcoming some of those challenges? Yeah, absolutely. So I think when you really break it down, uh, you can kind of think about the whole life cycle of a business. So first of all, uh, as they're getting formed and, and sort of setting up their payroll, you know, what ID numbers do you need from what states? How do you register that whole part of the equation? Um, then next you have a, uh, what are the, basically kind of the, the employee demographic setup, the basic, okay, who are my employees? What are their withholdings? Those sorts of pieces. How do I onboard each of those employees? You know, that's the next piece. Uh, third piece, like how does the business know if they're doing it correctly? Uh, you know, how do they know if they actually are withholding the right amounts, filing the right amounts, you know, these sorts of pieces. From a day-to-day -day perspective, we then see, um, especially for hourly workers, that they're very underserved by many of the large platforms out there. So, okay, how do you do scheduling, time and attendance? How do you take all of that hourly information and actually move it to the payroll system? That's the next piece. Um, then finally, PTO, labor accrual, uh, time off, things of that nature, another big problem. Um, then finally, on the back end, all of the analytics around payroll from, okay, you know, job costing and things of that nature to uh, the actual filing of taxes. Wait, are my taxes correct? Are they not? What does that look like? How do I know? Oh, I got to notice something's gone wrong. Like, should I be worried? You know, from end to end there, all of that are things that, you know, a business owner wants to spend absolutely zero time thinking about. They just want it to be simple and straightforward in a platform that understands their business and the problem that they are trying to solve. Um, and that's really where Check is able to help. That's exciting. So in your experience, then, when you're working with these clients, I'm intrigued because I think the payroll industry is really good at both these things. But do you find that most businesses tend to adapt or do they tend to innovate? Like, is there a willingness to innovate to solve the problem? Or typically do they go, you know what, we've got two systems. It just is what it is. We'll adapt to it when not even knowing that they could innovate out of the solution. I'm just intrigued to know what the, you know, what the common response is when, when they discover there's, a, there's an alternative. 
Yeah, so I'll talk about this at two levels. First of all, I'll start with that small business owner. If you're a small business owner, you have no choice but to adapt. You know, you've been adapting for decades. Like that's really, uh, you know, it should be in the the title uh, of running a small business, right? You're just constantly dealing with whatever comes your way, and you know, dealing with payroll is far down the list of the uh, the biggest things that you have to uh, to do to adapt to as you're running your business. And um, and so that's on that side. Now, if you were a software platform. Uh, and you're providing some sort of tool to these small business owners, I think there you are constantly thinking about innovation, right? That's the reason you exist. Like you are trying to actually push the world forward uh, and make it so that these business owners don't have to adapt. Uh, you know, they don't spend their days thinking about how they can, you know, kind of run every part of the, the team management of their business more simply. They're focused on, you know, making a be better burger or how they can, you know, kind of provide a better, you know, construction service those sorts of things. Um, for you, though, like that's that's why as a, a technology platform, your company exists. And so really, that's where Check comes in. We partner with those founders, those entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the, the managers who are really leading these innovative software platforms forward to help them not only solve other problems for these businesses, but solve the payroll problem, too. So presumably, that's where embedded payroll comes in, right? That's where we start to see embedded payroll be that, be that solution. Uh, I want to make sure that the listeners are really clear. What then exactly is embedded payroll? That's the solution. Why is that different from the more traditional payroll solutions we may be familiar with? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the best way to explain this is by a historical example. So I'll use one that I think all of your listeners are going to be familiar with, which is QuickBooks. Uh, yeah. You know, QuickBooks is, you know, the uh, ubiquitous small business sort of bookkeeping accounting tool, uh, you know, in this country. Uh, when you think about QuickBooks, Actually, payroll is not the first thing you think about. It is accounting, uh, right. right, and bookkeeping. Okay, 100%. but hold on. They also are one of the top, you know, three or four largest payroll providers in the country. That's pretty interesting. And that's been built up, you know, over the last 15 years or so. Um, I, I think really they are the kind of perfect first example of an embedded payroll business where they had a different product, bookkeeping and accounting that was incredibly closely tied to payroll. And they recognized, hey, if we introduce payroll in here as an additional service, it's going to be much better for our customers. It'll be a much simpler experience for them. And we'll be able to build a really big, powerful business um, you know, for Intuit along the way as well. Um, that's That really is embedded payroll. Now, uh, the difference... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'll, I'll let you go through the differences. I'm going to keen, I think you're going to take me where I was going to take you, which is I want to know what the advantages are then of that embedded. But let's see what the differences are first. And I'd be really keen to understand what the advantages are of an embedded payroll over some of the other models that exist today. Because obviously there are people that are going to be using some of the more traditional models and I'll be keen to understand whether that's the right solution for them. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I think uh, when you think about the advantages, like let's stick with the, the QuickBooks example. I think it, it totally depends on the type of business that you have and the problems you're solving. But in their case, it's an accounting tool. And obviously your payroll is some of the you know, largest amounts of money that are flowing through your business. It has to be tightly synced into your general ledger. Um, you know, Check works with multiple different uh, accounting providers like Wave, for example, to help them do exactly this. And so in that particular case, if you're a small business owner, okay, accounting is one of the first services bookkeeping that you're signing up for. Payroll is a really ad easy additional add-on uh, extension by being tightly integrated together. You don't have to worry about syncing it all back and forth. It's just all there, all in one place. It's part of that all-in-one offering. So I think that, you know, in the QuickBooks case is the sort of original embedded all-in-one value prop. Now, when you look across other industries, other segments, it can be different. So for example, it might be uh, that you have a scheduling and time tracking provider who just really deeply understands hourly businesses. Now they're introducing payroll as well. And um, that was our first partner, Homebase. And they're really this amazing platform for hourly workers. Uh, that's another you know great example of a value prop. Or in the construction space, you've got all sorts of different uh, unions and certified payroll requirements, just a ton of complexity. Uh, the, you know, frankly, the big platforms, they're built for your typical type of business. They're not built for your industry. Um, our partners are able to, to solve those specific industry needs for you. So it can vary from, from platform to platform. But the sort of common denominator there is that they are really bringing kind of all of the tools that you need for your type of business into one place. 
Yeah, nice. I, I'm trying to solve it. For me, I'm t- creating a picture. And correct me if this picture is wrong, but this is, this is kind of my vision that you've created for me here. I'm a visual learner, right? So I'm imagining you get a lot of global payroll providers at the minute, right? And what they do is they offer you know, really good, bespoke, unique uh, solutions to their different countries that they provide, which will make them different to maybe a traditional supplier that maybe they hold thousands of employees and they've got a single solution, but they can't understand the complexity of individual countries. It's similar, it sounds to me like this solution is similar in, in that, albeit with, on, from a domestic level, that actually you're able to niche down on the individual industries to give a much more bespoke service to the smaller construction, as you mentioned, one of those. It's kind of, you, you, you're able to, uh, leverage and utilize your expertise with those smaller industries to give a much more bespoke level service. But at what point does that change for a supplier? Because are we always talking then suppliers that have sort of naught to a thousand employees, or is there a point where actually that solution you outgrow it, for example? Yeah, totally. Uh, and I think that is a good analogy. It's a good way to think about it. It is absolutely okay for these, you know, often real world, you know, domestic businesses. Again, they're smaller businesses by and large. Uh, frankly, it's just, it's not where most of the innovation, where most of the investment dollars have gone. So they've been left behind in terms of having, yeah. you know, great tools to use to power their businesses. And that's what um, our partners and, and by extension check is, is really trying to push forward is the innovation in that space. Um, to your question on outgrowing it, uh, I think it really depends, depends on the platform. Frankly, it's it's just generally not the problem that most of these small businesses have. You know, these are businesses, they're looking to grow from three people to six people to 12 people. You know, they're by and large not looking to grow from, you know, 500 people to 5,000 yeah. to 50,000 people. Um, now, we certainly have partners who are building tools in those spaces and working with high growth companies. And uh, for those partners, they have to build their products to, to work with scalable businesses. But I would call that more the, uh, the exception rather than the rule. I think it's interesting. I wonder if we're at a bit of an inflection point at the moment in the industry, because we've seen a genuine shift away from the one size fits all model. And people are starting, the bigger systems are starting to utilize APIs and try to niche down a little bit in different areas because you've got suppliers that are amazing at TNA. So we'll plug into that. And it ends up with loads and loads of integration, of course, which comes at a cost and it can be quite complex. So with that in mind, and that might be more for the enterprise suppliers of this world or companies, but do you believe then the market is at an inflection point that there's more of a shift towards embedded payroll? And if that's the case, why is that happening now? I've seen it at, a, at an enterprise level. I haven't necessarily seen that because I haven't been immersed in the space as much as you are at the zero to 1,000 employee level. So I'd love to know a little bit more about that journey and, and why that's happening at this moment in time. Yeah, we have seen a tremendous shift here over the last 18 months or so. Um, and so I think it's really, uh, and you can see that both from the growth of the partners that Check now works with. Uh, you can see it from larger companies uh, that have sort of caught on to the space and begun to introduce new products, you know, the ADPs of the world. Uh, and you can see it in just the number of small businesses who are increasingly powered by embedded solutions. So if you take a step back, Check got started at the beginning of 2019, so about five and a half years ago. Uh, at that point in time, embedded finance wasn't really a term. Um, really, the whole wave of vertical SaaS companies that's been built up to power a lot of these small businesses um, was really just getting going. Certainly, there was not as much broad acknowledgement in the investor community of how powerful yeah. it was. Um, we spent two years in stealth building out our service because, as you know, your audience knows very well, payroll is complicated. Uh, it's not something that you can just do overnight. Um, and for us, we wanted to be a true built from the ground up modern payroll platform um, that was API first and really easy to use. So that took a lot of investment and, and kind of heads down work. Um, so you fast forward, it was really 2021 when we introduced the business. And, you know, it's like anything, you spend that first year kind of introducing people to the service, explaining to them, you know, what you are, what you aren't, you know, that sort of thing. And so it's now just really been that last 18 months, two years or so, where our earliest partners have become, begun to really break out. Uh, you know, other folks in the space have seen that and said, hey, that seems like a much better experience. My customers want that. I want to be able to provide that to them. Uh, and so now I think you see kind of this whole whole wave of innovation yeah. happening in the space where I think for the folks who who look at the small business segment, you know, most clearly and most intensely here in the U.S., it's pretty clear that Embedded is is now, you know, I, I would say several years ago, it was going to be the future. Increasingly now it's the present uh, and everyone's figuring out, you know, how can they get a piece of that? 
Yeah, no, well, and we're, we're seeing it as well. I, I'm intrigued to know whether, so for me, there are three drivers that are driving some of these shifts, uh, depending on what level you're looking at it. One is that you've got the companies and the entrepreneurs and the CEOs and C-suites that really want to get ahead of the technological curve. They want to make sure they've got a solution that's going to be ready for, te- technologically ready for the future, whether that's through AI capability or whatever it might be. They want to make sure they're not left behind. You've got the people that are driving shifts because they want to have more time to spend on strategic tasks. So you've got the payroll managers here that are, they need to upgrade their solution because it's too mundane. It's too spreadsheet heavy. I spoke to an individual last week who had to go through 43 different spreadsheets to process one payroll. And I think, wow, you know, that time is lost in that. So they want to be more strategic. So they'll invest in a platform that enables to do that. And then you've got a new thing that's interesting because this coincides with your growth. The biggest emergence uh, for me in the payroll industry is about being that connection now with employee experience. Now, it seems to me that if you have, if you're able to niche down and be more specialist and be a more compliant and, and, and have more flexible and adaptable solutions to cater for a specific audience, whether that's construction workers, hospitality workers or whatever, some people want pay on demand, some people want something different, you know, they want to be paid accurately on time. And the, I've seen a massive shift towards the solution providers like Check, who are able to give more of a bespoke customer kind of element to it. But which of those three drivers, or is it a combination of all three, do you think has been the biggest towards this kind of embedded adoption that you started to see come to the fore? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it is, first and foremost, uh, the second one you mentioned, which is that level of complexity for the business owner or the payroll Mm -hmm. manager. And then secondarily, the employee experience. And so let me explain more. You know, you referenced someone who had to spend, you know, 43 different spreadsheets working between them to run payroll. Imagine having to do that same sort of thing as someone running a business with 15 or 20 people or even a business with 100 people and you're sort of the one general admin person doing everything. You're not a payroll professional, you know, like the the types of companies that we power, generally the, the listeners of your podcast, you know, they don't have the resources to go hire, you know, kind of, you know, one of you all, someone who really is in the payroll space. Sure. And so for that person, like that pain is acute. It's really bad when they have to spend that much time dealing with all of this regulation and everything that surrounds payroll. So anything they could do to cut out another, you know, one, two, three, four hours out of their week to make it really simple for them to pay their teams, that's number one. Uh, by the way, it's not only the time, it's doing it accurately as well. Uh, if, yeah. you know, twice a year they make a mistake in moving that data around and now they've paid someone the wrong amount that risk churn the employee might leave they might go to a competitor you know it's a much bigger business problem at that point that extends far beyond payroll so that's the first thing simplicity saving time accuracy um you know that sense of trust and safety that's the number one uh, i think kind of benefit of embedded and why so many platforms are working with check to get into the space and once you solve that first order problem employee experiences than the second. Um, And to me, what we're really seeing there for small businesses is, you know, they compete across the whole labor spectrum, including with the gig providers out there. So they're often, you know, someone's looking, hey, should I drive for Uber, deliver for DoorDash, or, you know, go work for the the local restaurant in uh, in my area, or maybe work in uh, in a construction job, something like that, you know, these entry-level work type of things. And so I, I think the gig space, uh, really innovated over the last, you know, five to 10 years in ways to pay faster, have more flexibility around your pay, have more flexibility around work. Um, and the platforms we work with are trying to bring, you know, more and more similar experiences to, uh, to you know, full-time and part-time W-2 work as well. I'm intrigued. Uh, you, you mentioned something there in the gig economy, which we're seeing shifts in, in, in the global workforce uh, and the way things are happening. And I've seen a lot of uh, reports, more perhaps potentially on the global side of things than the domestic side of things, but where things, uh, technology such as blockchain could really improve that process with instant payments, particularly with the one, for companies that want to make micro payments or fractional payments. We're seeing certainly in the UK, a big rise towards uh, engaging fractional workers where they might just need a micro payment. Is that something that's maybe you're already using it or is it's in your, your, your innovation pipeline? But where do you see the role of blockchain in the future in, in, in relation to that, particularly supporting those gig economy workers or those fractional workers? Do you think it has a role to play? Uh, I think it's not that important, you know, to be okay. totally honest. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a technologist by background. And when I think about blockchain, don't get me wrong, there are huge kind of use cases and advantages to it in other spaces, uh, especially when you think about a sort of, de- uh, you know, uh, decentralized kind of global currency. Yeah. When you think about it from a payroll perspective, it's basically a slow database. 
And it's like, mm-hmm. well, okay, is the problem with making micro payments, uh, you know, the fact that I need a slower, more expensive database? Uh, and I would argue that the answer is no, uh, right? That that's not sort of the, the main problem. So there's a lot of different things that come into play where I think there's too much friction in the hiring process and the payment process and the tax filing process and the way as a worker, if you're working across different places, you manage all of that in tons of room for new tools to be built there. I think the payment rails aspect of it, at least when you look here kind of domestically in the U.S. and in North America, I think blockchain is, you know, by and large, not the answer to those problems. No, I'm probably in agreement with you. I certainly think there's more of a a use case for on the global side when you're trying to avoid, you know, currency fluctuations and you want to pay in different, you know, digital currencies and things like that. I think there's more of a use case there than maybe for the totally and stable coins and things like that. You know, can certainly be be helpful on on that side of things. I think there's a lot of really interesting innovation happening there. Uh, It's just less relevant, you know, domestically. Sure. I think you, you raised an interesting, we used the word, I think, frictionless. And I think that's where we're trying to get to, right? We want to give our employees a frictionless payroll experience that, as you say, is compliant and accurate. We did some research recently as a recruitment firm. And they said that um, uh, from our research, the employees that said they got paid incorrectly once in a year, you know, would be annoyed with their employer, They'd probably let it go. I think fifth, I think our, our stats said just under 20% would say they may consider changing jobs. But if they got it wrong twice in a year, that jumped to over 76%. So it is really, really important that we do have a system that gives us accurate and compliant payroll. I think it's important as well in all of these conversations with experts like yourself and others that we don't lose sight of what payroll is really about, right? That accurate, compliant, timely process. So with embedded payroll solutions in that mind and with that shift, because you're making it more bespoke, because we are really able to go granular with the complexity of things like construction payroll that you mentioned before, what does that mean for the future then of the big traditional players in the market? Are we going to see a bigger shift? Hello, global payroll leaders. Are you facing challenges in finding the right payroll talent for your team? If you are, I hear you. And I'm here to offer you a solution because at JGA Payroll Recruitment, we're experts at sourcing, attracting, and engaging with top tier global payroll talent that really drives business success. So don't let the frustration of finding great payroll professionals hold you back from raising the profile of payroll in your organization. The cost of a poor hire isn't just financial, it costs you time, or worse, it damages the reputation of your payroll operation. That's why we're 100% dedicated to ensuring your recruitment journey with us is nothing short of exceptional. Partner with us at JGA because we're an award-winning global payroll recruitment agency with a proven track record of success. We have over 100 five-star Google reviews and we're trusted by many of the world's leading brands. And we would love, just love to help you elevate your team with the best payroll talent available anywhere in the world. Reach out to us today at 01727 800 or 377 or visit us at jjrecruitment.com. And while you're at it, why not sign up to our weekly payroll newsletter for exclusive industry insights and job opportunities. With us, your perfect payroll opportunity or your perfect payroll hire awaits. Yeah, I think we are, uh, especially for these smaller businesses. And and I want to take a step back for a second. You know, you, you mentioned two words a moment ago, one being frictionless. How do we build these frictionless experiences? And then the other being accurate, right? Which I totally agree yeah. with. You do need to be accurate. People will leave if you get them wrong. And I just want to sort of really highlight that there's sort of real tension between those two things. How do you build something that is both accurate and frictionless. Uh, you know, you're typically, those are not aligned vectors. You can choose no, where to invest your resources, but you can't kind of choose to invest in both. And that is really the core reason that Embedded exists. It's really the core reason why we started Check as a company, because really what we do is we take that accurate side of things. We take all of the complexity of, you know, the thousands of different payroll taxes here in the U.S., all the different jurisdictions that you have to deal with. How do you uh, calculate those, file for them, you know, um, do the remittances, send the, the documents back to the employers? We handle all of that stuff that's frankly commoditized. It doesn't make the experience, you know, more frictionless. It's not going to be any different than what one of the big providers does, but it's doing all of that. Uh, in a completely seamless, programmatic, API-first way and making that available as a tool and saying, hey, our business model is not we're going to go try and monetize each one of your workers at you know, 15 or 20 bucks a worker. Uh, our model is to be an infrastructure provider to help your platform go and introduce payroll as one of your business lines. Like 
that means all of our partners, the platforms we work with, they can be absolutely laser focused really on that yeah. user experience layer of how do they build that really frictionless experience. And to me, this is really the, um, you know, the, the necessity, but ultimately now the trap that all the big payroll companies are in, which is they have to spend a tremendous amount of resources on the basics of accuracy and operational scalability. You know, the number of employees many of these folks have is, is truly mind boggling. And um, and so actually they're able to invest a much, much, much smaller proportion of their their budget, you know, their R and D budgets especially, which are already, you know, a relatively small portion of the total into building those frictionless experiences. So to me, what we're going to see is we're going to see actually really an explosion of, of kind of entrepreneurial innovation uh, in the SMB, uh, HR and payroll space. Um, you know, first year, checks going to Canada next year. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see it there here in, in short order as well. Um, and as we do that, I think the, the big guys are going to be forced to adapt. They're going to have to figure out, OK, are there ways for us to, you know, build better experiences for these companies, too? And I'm sure they'll, they'll find ways to do that. It'll benefit the, uh, the whole ecosystem. But sure. uh, our view is trying to build one better product is just the wrong approach. We think the right way is to have, you know, now hundreds and eventually thousands of different payroll products um, that are built for all these different use cases. Yeah, look, for me, it makes it makes sense. You mentioned the word API first. So for anyone that wasn't quite familiar with what that is, you've explained it there brilliantly afterwards, right? It's having those things. I like to, I was talking to um, a friend of mine recently about uh, about what APIs were, and I tried to describe it. I'm not saying this is the best way of me describing it, but this is how I gave it to them. They, they weren't from the payroll industry, but I was talking about how the industry was changing and we are seeing more API first organizations like Check come to the fore. I said, it's a bit like the, if you're into soccer, the Premier League, right? There used to be one manager that did everything. They did the set plays, they did the goalkeeper coach, they didn't have any experts outside. It meant they had very little time for, you know, for strategy and for fitness. So the game of football or soccer has evolved significantly because now they realize the best managers are those that bring in a set piece coach because they're better at that. They can spend all their time, all their efforts on the set pieces. You get someone else on tactics, someone else on fitness, someone else on nutrition. But the, the whole sum of the parts then, of course, is it makes the manager better. The experience for the players is better. The experience for the fans is better. The quality of football is better because you've got experts in every individual role. And I try to explain that's what's happening in the world of payroll. We're getting little experts, entrepreneurs coming in, developing systems, but they're putting all of their R&D budgets into that one part of the process that then plug into the bigger, bigger part or bigger part of the puzzle, if you like, to create a seamless solution. Yeah. I don't know if that's a fair analogy, but it, I think he got the process. But for those listening, they may not be familiar with what an API, API first business is. I don't think you would add to that to give them a really good understanding of what that means. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's a great analogy. I think specialization is a huge part of it. And I think if you kind of double click into that and apply it back to the technology space, I think it's helpful to look at, you know, experiences that folks have had in their everyday life. So probably the um, most familiar types of experiences they've had have been around um, making payments um, and around receiving text messages. So for example, if you've ever taken an Uber ride anywhere in the world, you know, you've paid for that probably with your credit card. Now in your mind, you were just using the Uber app, you were paying Uber, but Uber is not a payments company, right? They haven't yeah. built out all of that infrastructure. And so they're working with someone, you know, a good chance being Stripe, one of our partners on the back end, uh, to actually handle those payments. Um, so that's a good example where Stripe is very API first. You're interacting with Uber. You don't have to know anything about, you know, Stripe or Adyen or any other player. Uh, and it just works for you. And the same is true in our case. So, um, for example, we have a partner, CCC, who is one of the largest providers of software to um, like auto body collision repair shops. So you get in a wreck, you take your car in, uh, you know, you just think of it as the local body shop, nothing more than that. But the people running that need a piece of software to run their business and know how to interact with your insurance company and how much they're going to get paid when they make different repairs, things of that nature. By the way, they got to know how to pay all their people. And some of that's based on how much work they do and how many things they fix and how long that takes. So, uh, you know, that auto body, you as a business owner, or as a consumer rather, don't need to know anything about CCC. As the business owner, you know CCC and the way they're powering your business. And then for CCC, they're able to provide payroll to you without having to be experts in it themselves by virtue of using check. So it's you know all along the value chain, everyone specializing in what they're really, really good at and ultimately creating a bundle that's better you know, for the business owner, for their employees, and for the end consumer. 
Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, the, the Uber example is a really good one. I think most people can relate to that. So let's talk about Check then for a minute, because you've given us a great example of how API, API first organizations are, are, are you know, taking a really good position in the market because there's a need for it and we're trying to improve that employer experience. But what makes Check uniquely different then or or even uniquely positioned to drive the change in the power world? Because there must be other providers, I'm assuming, that would be competitors to, to what you're doing. So what makes Check different? What sets you apart from other payroll infrastructure organizations or other embedded payroll solution companies that may may or may not be out there? Yeah. So I think we were the first ones sort of crazy enough to actually see the opportunity yeah. here and decide to go take it on. And because it's a long game, this is not something that you just decide to do overnight uh, and then it magically works. You got to go build it. You got to then establish trust in relationships with these large platforms. You have to have them build on top of you and then you have to work with them to really build up payroll as a, as a business line, as a part of their business. So it's something that, you know, it's really a multi-decade long endeavor. And, you know, when we got started back, you know, five, almost six years ago now, I think we were very clear eyed about that. And so first and foremost, you know, we have a I'll call it three year head start over anyone else out there when it comes to actually building from the ground up the experience that you need um, to build in this space. And um, because it just turns out that having an end user facing software product and having an infrastructure platform like Check are just two different things. You build them in very different ways with very different feature sets. Um, and so that's kind of reason one to, to work with us. Uh, I think secondly, uh, some of the big you know payroll players, I think, look at, at folks we partner with and see them as competitive and, and worry about that. And so want a piece of the pie and have introduced embedded offerings to, uh, you know, to try and do that. But it's a really tough position to be in because put yourself in the shoes of, of, a, of someone evaluating embedded payroll and thinking about partnering with Check versus partnering with a, a big player out there. Um, with Check, all we do is embedded payroll. We don't have an in solution that's out there competing with you. We are 100% focused on making your business successful. If you go partner with one of the existing players, number one, you're getting a product that was retrofitted for embedded that isn't programmatic, isn't built from the ground up just for you. And you're partnering with an entity that has an economic incentive where they're going to make two, three, four, five times as much money if they keep their customer on their core solution that they own versus if you own the customer relationship like why are they working with you in the first place how much conviction do you have that they're going to continue to really put a lot of money and effort you know into that embedded business to be the absolute best partner to you um it's it's really a classic um sort of uh, you know harvard business school professor clayton christensen style uh, innovators dilemma problem um, where it's really hard to see how the big payroll companies sort of reinvent themselves for this new embedded world. And that's why, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a platform out there doing it, you know, the vast majority of them, uh, you know, choose to partner with us because of both those product advantages and that sort of deeply built in uh, aligned incentives. That leads me to ask a question. And maybe this is a, a apology that this is a, a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question, but do you then partner with some of the bigger traditional payroll providers as well? Could that form part of your solution? Or are they too generous, too big? To, that kind of takes away from the niche element or the niche element rather for the US audience, you know, of, of what you're trying to achieve. So I'm interested. Do you, does that happen? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, historically, the answer was no. Uh, you know, we really ran out and partnered with platforms who didn't offer payroll today, but wanted to introduce it. And we're building on check technology to do that. That's beginning to change, not with, you know, the absolute biggest uh, you know, kind of public payroll companies out there. Sure. But I would say one of the biggest uh, sort of new elements of growth that we've seen is platforms who actually saw the opportunity in payroll maybe five, 10 years ago went and built some portion of it on their own, maybe did it via an acquisition. Usually this isn't someone that you would think of where payroll is their sort of number one product, uh, but they saw the embedded opportunity and, and went down the path of trying to do payroll. And what they've realized is, wait, this isn't our number one product offering. Payroll is incredibly complicated. This is expensive and hard to maintain. And frankly, Check is just better at it than we are and cheaper, uh, able to do it more cheaply than we are as well. And so we're increasingly working with uh, what we call these rip and replace migrations. Folks who have payroll businesses, they want to continue to offer a really simple, seamless experience for their customers, but want to be able to focus, as we discussed earlier, even more on the UX there. And they're moving over to checks, APIs, our back end rails for handling all the tax calculation and money movement and things of that nature.
Yeah, it's really interesting. For those that you know want to understand just how complicated it is to get a payroll system off the ground, particularly to you know, whether, whoever you use in the market, I know that Microsoft have tried to launch a payroll product on about 16 different occasions, I think, and they still don't have one, right? Because it is complex. It, it constantly changes, and it's a really difficult market to break. So the fact you've managed to do that in six years and do so so successfully, I mean, kudos, because I know how difficult that is, having been in this space for over two decades. So, And I've seen your journey. I've had um, you know Jim on the show a couple of years ago, and he talked to me about that journey then. And from where you were then to where you are now, it's just been nothing but growth. So it leads me to ask the question, you referenced five to 10 years in that last response. So where do you see the future of payroll moving in the next five to 10 years, especially with the rise of embedded solutions? And what are we going to start to see? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the last five have been really about, uh, well, really two things. Unrelated to embedded, you certainly had a huge rise on the global payroll side, the move away from in-person work and yeah. COVID and things of that nature. So that's where we've come from. As we look ahead, uh, I think we've sort of had a, a reaction to that, you know, much more in-person work. Uh, you've got embedded really on the rise here where we've established the concepts over the last few years, but it's just beginning to really, I think, kind of hit that inflection point as we discussed earlier. And so what you're going to see is, you know, again, we're going to go from today, Checkworks with 65 platforms. Five years from now, you're going to see hundreds, if not thousands of different new payroll products in the market. And um, when you look in the U.S., Check already, I believe, has worked with more companies launching new payroll businesses than any other platform out there in the past. I think that's really powerful just in these first few years that we've been around. Uh, we really see that accelerating. We're just getting started. So if you look what that means for the end business user, uh, okay, the platforms that are serving them, they're now not going to be spending their time focused on just how do we calculate a tax in you know, Iowa or Alaska, or how do we deal with you know, the revenue agency or the child support garnishment agency and you know, XYZ state. Instead, they're going to be focused on, hey, how can we build an amazing new you know, AI-based tool to give you advice on dealing with your workers or on how you can do marketing better or things of that nature. And so I think what we're going to see is, is really twofold. One is a result of specialization, higher and higher quality bars in terms of the experience that's offered, more and more um, sort of niches that have really high quality purpose-built software for them. Um, and then as a result, uh, you know, kind of more and more tools, whether it be AI or things of that nature, um, that these software platforms are able to go focus on to really help business owners, you know, uh, run their yeah. businesses better. I think it's really interesting because I, it's hard to disagree with that happening. That on you know, innovators in the space, that we're seeing lots of disruption happening in the payroll space. We're coming in, spotting opportunities to improve employee experience, accuracy, compliance, whatever it might be. And we know that we've got the emergence of more powerful computing around the corner. And I, I saw a Mo Gaudat talk about that. You know, quantum computing is going to be sixteen thousand times more powerful in the next five years than it is today, right? So we're going to have the innovators in this space utilizing some of these new technologies in such powerful ways that there are going to be organizations that are going to want to link into those innovations as they come to market. And of course, it's going to be very hard to link in with with, with some of the larger players that don't have the ability to be as flexible or as adaptable to integrate instantly. Whereas I guess that's kind of something that an embedded power solution provider can do. You can, you can kind of react in real time as technology evolves. If someone suddenly goes, you know what, I've, I've got a new solution. It's based on quantum computing as an example, and it's, it's 16,000 times faster than what we've done before. And you can, I guess if it works and you prove the concept, you can plug in quite fast. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think really like if I leave you with one sort of mental model of what check is, think of check as a tool, you know, whereas, uh, you know, if you're a payroll provider or a, a payroll administrator manager, usually what you're signing up for is you're signing up for a product, you know, a platform yeah. that's going to help you do your job an ADP or a workday or UKG or, you know, there's obviously many of them out there. That's not check. Like we really couldn't be further from that. We are a tool such that if you are, uh, an entrepreneur, a developer, a software engineer, and you're trying to build something new, uh, we help provide you know the plumbing and the piping and everything that you need to go build that new thing. And so exactly, kind of the more innovation there is, the more it becomes easier to build software, whether through you know these new LLM capabilities or other things, mm -hmm. uh, the more that I think tools like Check become valuable. And so that's really what, what we get excited about. I, truly, we don't know. I, I will be disappointed if in five years, sort of the, the most powerful use cases for Check are ones that I can tell you about today. What gets us yeah. most excited is the entrepreneur that I'm going to be tomorrow who's found a new space that I know nothing about um, and that they managed to say, like, hey, this is really complicated. This is really hard. 
but they, our space has a real problem with payroll. We're going to build on check to make that simpler. And um, that's been true of, you know, most of our partners who've had kind of the major success over the last few years. And I'm sure it'll be the same as we go forward too. Yeah, super exciting. It's a space I'm going to be looking at with absolute interest. I, I find it, and I'm really excited about the future of the industry. I love watching the, the, the industry evolve and innovate. And I think we've seen a lot of that over the last few years, the emergence of Czech being one of those innovations and changes. And um, super excited to see where, where it goes. And I've, I've no doubt your vision will come true because it's what it has so far, right? And we're seeing this, this, this shift for sure. For those that are listening at the minute, maybe they want to find out a little bit more about embedded payroll. They want to take their first steps to integrating their solution into existing systems you know what was uh, maybe the last question probably is what are the couple of the steps they can you would recommend they took to, to start that journey yeah absolutely i mean certainly come and check us out so uh you'll be happy to talk with you or check hq uh, uh, or just reach out to myself andrew at checkhq.com are pretty easy to uh, to find online uh, we, we really do think of ourselves as partners to folks who are innovating in this space. So, you know, even if you're not ready to do it right now, we're uh, we're happy to have a conversation with you about uh, about how we might be able to help or just how to think about uh, about these sorts of problems. And um, again, as a tool, like we really think of ourselves as being, uh, you know, Shopify likes to talk about how they're arming the rebels against Amazon, <laughs> you know, and helping these smaller merchants compete. Like we think of ourselves in the same way. We're really trying to kind of arm the smaller rebels in the kind of HR and payroll space and help them compete against, you know, those big platforms that have been around for decades. And that's ultimately good for everyone. It's good for the whole ecosystem and, and most of all for the small business owners that uh, that we're serving. So, yeah, if you play in that space generally and and want to have a chat, we'd love to talk with you. Fantastic. Well, it forces innovation, which is always a good thing, in my in my opinion. It forces the evolution of the industry. So, for anyone that does want to find out more, just to be rest assured that we do have the link in our show notes. So, if you're listening to this on audio, you're watching this on on YouTube, wherever you're getting the content, click straight through to the show notes. There will be a direct link to the Check HQ website. You can find uh, immediately, and there'll be a link as well to to Andrew's LinkedIn and, and, and other links as well. So, do have a look at that if you want to find out more. You don't have to type it into Google or why, but whether you missed the domain, you can get it in the show notes. Right. Let's open the uh, payroll. Vault. I, I'm really excited by this section of the show, Andrew, because it's rare I get, you know, really exciting, innovative entrepreneur often, you know, that coming from a slightly different perspective. So three questions for you, sharp and sharp. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to working to someone working in payroll right now, what would it be? I think recognize that the industry is changing, whether it's embedded payroll, with, you know, check pushing it forward or, you know, LLM based tools. Uh, the future does not look like the past and you need to figure out how you fit into that. Beautiful. And well, on the subject of change, then, if you had the power to change one thing about the entire payroll industry right now, what would it be? I think you would, I, I would consolidate all of the different backends that all these different payroll companies are built on into one. Uh, and it would be a really, it would be based on an open spec, uh, if not published by the government, because I'm not super optimistic on that happening. So, you know, hundreds of different ones across the country, you got to deal with at least sort of a consortium that comes together and publishes the open spec that it's all based on. It's all verifiable. Frankly, a huge amount of what goes on in this space should be open source. It's not differentiated. Uh, and, and some of that that's the whole area of the stack where Czech is really innovating. And yeah. I think we would all be better off and stop just duplicating effort as a result. For sure. You know what? Funny enough, you won't know this, but I gave a talk on the future of the industry as I saw it. And I took us all the way into 2049, the year of potential singularity, right? And I said, at that point, there may well be an open source global payroll brain where everything is just available, right? Because technology is evolving so far. So I think I think that could happen one day in the future. I know it sounds crazy now, but I'm not adverse or I believe that that could be a, a genuine possibility for the future of payroll. I don't know what your thoughts are. Totally. No, I think it's it's that it's going in that direction. There's no question about it. We'll see exactly how long it takes and, and kind yeah. of how we get there. Um, but we're, we're going to do our part to push it uh, you know, forward. Very nice. And my last question, a little bit of fun. I'm intrigued to find out if payroll was a song or a movie, I don't mind which, which song or movie would it be? And why? Oh my God. Uh, song or a movie, payroll. Uh, I feel like it would be, what's a really, really long movie uh, that's, <laughs> you know, pretty powerful, but pretty hard to get through and requires a, a lot of patience. I don't know. There, there's a, I'm blanking on the name of it. There's like a civil war movie. Oh, it's I've ever seen like my that, dad. Maybe? 
Yeah. Some, uh, yeah. Forrest Gump is, is probably too good, but uh, there, there was one. I put it this way. It was a movie. Like, we were in the theater, and there was actually an intermission, you know, like a 20-minute intermission, wow. like, in the theater at the movie. And I'm like, all right, th- this tells you that it, this is probably, you know, too long and uh, and needed some editing. Th- that's, to me, that that's kind of the payroll space. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do our part to help with some of the editing here. No, that's fair. I found that for Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy when it came out. I thought yeah. the remake of that went on for hours. I needed an intermission. It was a good <laughs> movie i enjoyed it but it just that needed some more editing and a personal view some people's favorite film but i get i get the idea well look, andrew yeah, Brown, exactly. thank you so much for joining me today on the payroll podcast your insights into the future of payroll are intriguing they're different they're really uh you know they're really innovative and it shows how a better payroll um, could be the future of the industry. It's certainly been an eye-opening um, exploration into the world of embedded payroll, and I've learned a lot today, which is which is always exciting for me. So for anyone who's listening, again, who wants to find out more about Ch- Check and how they're innovating in this space, how they're revolutionizing payroll infrastructure, then do check out their website, which is on the show notes, checkhq.com. Uh, and for anyone as well who is listening to this, please do remember to share the show with your colleagues and friends. Together, we can really raise the profile of payroll globally. And I would last like to ask you all a little favor. If you have a moment, to leave a little review that really helps with rankings but most importantly it helps more people to see the show when they're doing their searches so if you can leave us a review that would be fantastic of course if you are a payroll professional or an hr professional even listening to this show and you need support with a payroll related vacancy anywhere across the globe that's where me and my team can help please reach us at jjrecruitment.com and of course our details will also be in the show notes just leaves me one more time to say a huge thank you to andrew from check hq for joining me today on the payroll podcast it's been a blast thank you ever so much Yeah, it's really fun. Thank you, Nick. This episode is sponsored by Deal. That's D-E-E-L. Deal is your forever people platform built to simplify your entire global payroll process. Deal's fully managed global payroll makes it possible to pay your entire team in over 100 countries and in over 200 currencies all in one place. So whether you're an enterprise business, a small company, or something in between, Deal is built to meet your unique business needs. So if you're ready to transform your global payroll system, click the link in the show notes to book a demo with Deal today. That's D-E-E-L.